This video is sponsored by Brandon Staczynski from California. And it's thanks to Brandon for being a supporter of Cranes Etc. through Patreon. On one side of the model box is a photo of the real crane. And if we turn it over, there's a photo of the crane in upside down mode. And if we turn it over, there's a photo of the real crane. If we turn it over again, there's a photo of the model. The Liebherr LTM 1500 has been made in a number of different colour versions. And this one is in the colours of the UK crane hire company, Baldwins. As usual, the parts in the box are all nicely wrapped. And there's the standard LTM 1500 instruction manual for the model. And that's good enough to help with all the main features of the crane. Although one thing it does miss is any reaving diagrams for the hook blocks. Cranes Etc has made over a thousand reviews and reports, so if you like what we do, please support us and help us continue by making a pledge via Patreon. The link is on the screen and in the video description. And in return for your support, you can get various rewards, including news, early access, discounts, and other benefits. And know that your support will keep us going. Out of the box the crane has a 50 meter boom, but we can rig it with a longer 84 meter boom. So the first thing we need to do to achieve that is to install the longer boom section. The boom is raised and locked in place with a key, and that system works really well and you can set it at any angle you like. Next we manhandle the last boom section, which is also known as carefully removing it, making sure the spring clip doesn't fly away. That clip gets reinstalled in the longer boom section and then we insert it back into the crane. The model engineering of all the boom sections is good so the pieces fit together well, and you have to press in on that clip as it moves past the boom lock positions at 192 and 46%. The permissible axle loads in the UK are high, so we can also rig the wire guy attachment which is there to improve the crane's lifting capacity. Steel pins hold it in place at the pivot point, and then we need to carefully stretch out the metal pendant bars and make a connection to the crane body using tiny nuts and bolts. As you can see, there are two special tools that are provided to help you do up the nuts and bolts, so you don't need microscopic fingers and thumbs. The final piece of attachment is to screw in the end of the hydraulic ram that raises the Y guy, and that is a simple screw in connection. So the crane is nearly ready for the road, but let's put a hook block on. And for that we'll choose the smallest one, even though it seems quite big. Using the special key in the winch drum we can wind off some rope, and take it to the front where we can reeve on the hook. We need to tie it on at the front and nothing supplied with the model, so we'll use a piece of chain. And one last touch to add is a ladder onto the cab of the crane. So here we are, the big 1500 is all ready for the road. And let's bring in a heavy haul support truck to carry some other parts. The first thing we'll load it up with is some spreader plates to go under the outrigger pads. And then we'll load on some of the counterweight. And with the model there's quite a lot more parts than we're loading onto this truck. Then we can add on the luffing winch assembly. And in case we need it, we'll add on a bigger hook block. For this review we'll take a particular look at the detailing of the model, and it starts underneath with tiny hoses and tanks. The wheels are very nice because they have detailing on the side walls of the tyres, and there are different hubs for the driven and non-driven axles. Around and inside the cab the detailing is very good and you can see leap hair on the seat back. And let's take a look at some of the really tiny details such as these graphics. And one thing that is amazing is how huge and fat that finger is. At the turntable of the crane there are nicely toothed gear wheels, and more really tiny graphics including some on the inside of the main boom rams. In fact everywhere as you go around the model there are small details and tiny graphics, and the only thing you wish you didn't have to see is that huge finger. Here there are some tiny grills that look great, and to be honest we're quite fed up looking at big fingers. 
The crane cab also has very high detailing with Lee Pair on the seat back inside. And again, some of the graphics are incredibly small. A pleasing aspect of the model is that there is also detailing in those hard to see places such as under the main boom. And if we go to the counterweights at the back, the Lee Pair name is nicely embossed in the castings. The main boom is similarly detailed with tiny graphics. And the walls of each of the telescopic sections is realistically thin. And there are graphics on each one. Moving to the Luffing winch assembly and there are nice hydraulic hoses. And on top of the crane hydraulic connections are modelled. There are three hook blocks supplied and these are the biggest two. And they are very nice parts all made of metal. Again the realism hits a high point with all of the graphics. And they're very nice too because the hooks have also got realistic looking safety catches. We've seen the LTM 1500 before so we'll now take a quick run around the main features again. Each of the steering axles has some movement and there is also nicely sprung suspension. The crane drives along reasonably well but some of the axles have a bit too much looseness in the steering so they wobble a little and that also affects the model if we try to drive it steering but at least you can pose the wheels reasonably well for a static display. We're on site now so we need to pull out the outriggers and they've got two stage metal beams which work reasonably smoothly. The pads lower in the usual way by unscrewing them. And the pistons have got nice smooth walls. One tiny feature is that you can lock the pads with small spring clips. And we might see that if you get your finger out the way. Yes, that's better. Now we can see what's going on. The outrigger arrangement is strong enough to support the crane wheels free. And the next stage in the setup is to remove the ladder and move the crane into the operating position. It rotates nicely enough and the cab also has a tilting function. We now ask the team to disconnect the hook from its tying on point at the cab and then we can boom up to unload the rest of the stuff that's on the support truck. We can raise and lower the hook using the winch but the winch is one area of the model that could be improved and that's because the drum operates much too stiffly. As you would expect you can rotate the crane body and that was smooth enough on the model. And although it's fairly stiff it is smooth without any rocking. It is nice that you can set the model up in a realistic pose of self ballasting. But to attach the counterweight on the model we need the assistance of the giant hand crane. It hangs in place and then you secure it using two small pins one on either side. And it's not work for a fat fingered installation team. Extending the telescopic boom works in the usual way, you just pull out each of the sections and they are self-locking at each of the locking points. For more capacity on the lifting chart we need to open up the wire guy arrangement. And this would only be done up in the air like this on the real crane if you had a giant hand available. Once the wire guy is opened up to a right angle to the boom, then the connecting pendants need to be smoothed out into a nice looking catenary type shape. The other thing we need to do then is to attach the guy ropes to the end of the boom. And you wind the rope off using the special key in the winch drums. The connection at the top of the boom is then made with tiny brass nuts and bolts. This is another excellent looking Lee Pair LTM 1500 crane by WSI Models. It has a very good level of detailing which is mostly authentic to the real crane. And it is an impressive model both on the road or when set up. This Baldwin's crane is a very nice limited edition and overall it's excellent. Mm -hmm. 